Uh, welcome to another edition of the Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com. I'm your host, Earl Basin, and yet again joining me is co-host Jason Juglin J. Ford. Interesting weekend, Jay. Yeah, beautiful weekend, actually. With beautiful weather here on the island and helped out with a lot of the sports that we had here. We had an abundance of sports over the weekend, but first, let's get a message from our sponsor. Bermuda, listen up. D-Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D-Music, you can easily search for your favorite artist and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Jay, we had a lot of sports locally uh, over the weekend, but overseas, the Bermuda Bocce team came back with a bronze medal. Uh, Paralympian uh, Yushay De Silva Andrade won the bronze medal in the BC4 division. Um, She's improving leaps and bounds, but just to have a team with Steve Wilson and um, I can't remember the other young man's name, but uh, just to have a team there, they all finished, went to the semifinals, but great effort on behalf of, of Team Bachi Bermuda. Yeah, you think about five years ago, we, we never heard of it. <laughs> we never heard of it. And to see that they've come leaps and bounds and, you know, for first time picking up a medal in the competition, you know, I mean, obviously, you know, they're ecstatic, you know, you know, um, first of all, going to the Paralympics, but now actually placing, you know, they're ecstatic. And that builds well, not only for them personally, but also all the other, you know, para-athletes to say, you know what, if she can do it, I can do it. If he could do it, I can do it. And we all get that competitive spirit, no matter what our physical abilities are, we all have the competitive spirit and, and it, it, you know, to see the smiles, and that's everything. To see the smiles on their faces, man, it's, it's unbelievable. Well, let's get the report from Montreal with Bermuda Bocce. Bermuda Bocce members Omar Hayward, Steve Wilson, and Paralympian Yushe De Silva Andrade were again in action on the final day of the BizFed 2017 Regional Opening Championships in Montreal. Paralympian De Silva Andrade finished third in the BC2 class, capturing the bronze medal. This was the first time Bermuda had been on the podium in an international bocce competition. De Silva Andrade defeated Matt Hitler of USA 3 to 2 to progress to the semi-final. She then played Tammy McLeod of Canada, losing Using a very close match, 4-3. De Silva Andre then took on Michael Mercer from Canada, and once again, this was an extremely close game, finishing 4-4 in regular time. De Silva Andre then won the tiebreaker to claim the bronze medal. Well, Jay, back on the local front, uh, the Bermuda Volleyball Association hosted yet another year of the Bermuda International Invitational Volleyball Championships. It took place up at the Work Academy Gymnasium. Uh, let's get the report from the world of volleyball right here in Bermuda. The 2017 edition of the Bermuda Open Volleyball Indoor International Tournament concluded inside the Work Academy Gymnasium on Saturday afternoon. Mount Allison University won the gold medal, but needed three matches to do so, pulling off the win against Bay Volleyball Club. The bronze medal went to the Island Girls, who defeated Lobster Pot in straight games. The Sackville Sonics were the consolation win. Well, Jay, that long-awaited, when I say long-awaited, long-awaited, Bermuda Cricket Board season is finally underway. Uh, I did mention a few weeks ago <laughs> that uh, Dalray and and Kamal have played more cricket or more days of cricket than uh, all our teams put together will play this season. Uh, but uh, we started mm -hmm. started on Sunday with the league. But prior to Sunday start, we had the Fakray Crockwell. Uh, Expo at St. David's, but first let's get let's start with the 2020 league because it is the league uh, it is underway. Bailey's Bay took on Tough Dogs. St. David's entertained or was entertained by North Village. <laughs> Either way you look at it, but your thoughts on the season actually getting underway? Finally, <laughs> no, finally. But you know, like I said, for the fans, I mean, it's long awaited, but it's here, and the weather has been great for cricket. Um, a little warm over the weekend, but had a good breeze, and that was the main thing. But no, Earl, um, right now it's just starting to see the ball. 
And, and that's, you know, you can see some teams uh, more adjusted than the others. Unfortunately, I won't say unfortunate, but because this weekend it was basically mismatches. Um, top premier teams playing basically commercial teams. Um, obviously, the night league that has North Village and Tough Dogs, who do, do quite well in that league. Um, some folks on Amanda's <laughs> claim that um, these teams could hold up any team in the premier on the day. Uh, it just wasn't Sunday. <laughs> <laughs> it might have been a Tuesday or a right. Wednesday, yeah. but it wasn't Sunday. Yeah. And uh, and you see that, you know, and when when you have a mismatch like that, you have to take your chance, especially in the game of cricket or not. It comes back to bite you. Um, and that one batsman could probably go on and make half as well. Let's see the report. Yeah. And um, it will explain what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> The 2017 Bermuda Cricket Board 2020 season kicked off this weekend with Bayless Bay picking up a 32-run win over Tough Dogs at the Somerset Cricket Club. Bayless Bay scored 147 for 9 in their allotted 20 overs. Taryn Frey was their top scorer with 50. He was dropped on the first delivery of the match in slips. Michael Corday returned figures of 4 overs, 2 for 26. In reply, Bermuda's World Cup wicketkeeper Dean Miners led the Tough Dogs in scoring with a knock of 71 not out. He helped them get to a respectable score of 115 for 9 after being 15 for 7 after 6 overs. Carl Hutzel was the pick of the Bayless Bay Bowlers with 4 overs, 4 wickets for 9 runs. In the other match of the day, St. David's Cricket Club won by 100 runs over North Village. The scores, St. David's Cricket Club 192 for 7, North Village 92 for 7. The Fakray Crockwell Cricket Festival took place at Lords and St. David's with PHC crowned the champions. We Warriors finished 2nd and Bayless Bay finished 3rd. Dean Stevens from PHC led the most runs department with 100. 27, while his teammate Ricardo Brengman finished with 123 runs. Alan Douglas from We Warriors was third with 95 runs. The best catch of the tournament went to Kevin Sunger from Bayless Bay, while Jerron Dickinson from St. George's Cricket Club took the most wickets, claiming five for the tournament. Ricardo Brengman was named the tournament MVP. Well, Jay, there's the report. We also got the report of Saturday. Uh, plenty of entertainment at Lords and St. David's, all for a good cause. Yeah, session down in St. David's. Um, if you, you know, for the folks that did get to go down there and watch it, and it was, you know, not just the atmosphere around the field, but it became a, a health hazard down there. If, you know, spectators had to keep the helmets on and because balls were flying aplenty. Taking evasive action. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Cars, some cars, well, they saw the brutal. <laughs> <laughs> or felt the brutal side of a cricket ball, but no, all in all, um, the family and the community came together to to pay homage to for Craig Crockwood and, and eventually uh, retired the jersey, his jersey in Hill Nine. So all in all, a successful first competition that they're looking to do on a yearly basis. But to see cricketers and non-cricketers, because there was a whole bunch of non-cricketers too, yeah, sure. <laughs> but no guys to come out and. and not just in, from the St. Davis community across the island to come down there and, and play for the weekend. And it was, I mean, it was nothing but smiles and the jokes, the bantering, which we're used to. And folks, if you could hear some of the bantering up on the hill, well, if you stayed out of the way, the ball come on top of the hill. But it really it, it builds well for next year and the year after and the year after. So we want to take our hats off to St. Davis Cricket Club and also especially the Crockwell family. They had a whole committee to put that together. And, and we just want to thank you. Yeah. Well, Jay, also staying with the news of cricket, um, Bermuda's America's, ICC America's opponents, uh, USA, we, it was discovered or reported yesterday that uh, they're facing expulsion from the ICC. Um, we've actually asked the cricket board, um, how does this set Bermuda up? What's the plus? What's the plus and the minuses? Um, if this was to come into effect, I know the the meeting isn't until June, but um, what they're hoping will happen if the United States are expelled, um, do their under nineteen still play in the under nineteen tournament coming up? Um, if they advance, what happens? Where, where do we go from here? What we have to have a plan going in, uh, even even though we don't know what the outcome is yet or will be. I mean, we, we've been keeping an eye on this situation for a while now. The last couple of years, um, it's been it's been in disarray, mm -hmm. to say at least. And even had us question why would they award the USA with these competitions, mm -hmm. um, knowing 
that there's some things that has to be sorted out. Mm-hmm. And these are some, these are some very, very, you know, drastic situations. So it's like, why would they be? And then, you know, it's like, okay, this is not making no sense. No, it's, it's why we said it wasn't making no sense. Mm-hmm. So all in all, ICC, I don't know what they're going to do. Like I said, it's not fair when you talk about to Bermuda, to Canada and the likes. Mm-hmm. Um, who could have had the chance to host um, these competitions. But also for the cricketers now, because now, like I said, you might have been preparing yourself for the climbing or wickets in the USA, which now that might be in jeopardy too. So that messes with your um, preparation. Mm-hmm. And who knows, money? How far are the preparations going into the ticketing and hotel and all that, or, or just the men always is going to prepare for that? Mm-hmm. <sighs> Interesting, but um, I just think we just have to keep a closer eye on it because let's see how and see if we get an answer from BCB how it actually affects us locally. The Bermuda Cricket Board have announced that four late transfers have been accepted. Ronald Gibbons leaves the St. George's Cricket Club heading to Devonshire Recreation Club. Micah Simon leaves Willowcott moving to Neighbours Somerset Cricket Club. While Tyshon Brown is leaving Somerset Cricket Club heading across the street to Willowcott. Shaquille Outerbridge is leaving Warwick Workman's Club and moving to Willowcott. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D-Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D-Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Well, Jay, back on the track, Um, the area permit meet, the Bermuda International Area Permit Meet, it will take place on July 1st Um, in a press conference last evening. uh, Don Arena, the president of Bermuda National Athletic Association, alongside Jessica Lewis, Bermuda's two-time Paralympian, um, announced that uh, there will be a para event this year, uh, 800-meter event. Um, Let's get the report from Donna and Jessica at the National Sports Center track. A matter of two months away from the 2017 edition of the area permit meet. Um, exciting news, eh? Yes, we're excited. Um, this is our second annual Bermuda Invitational Permit Meet, area permit meet. Um, and we're excited that we're putting a new twist on it this year. Um, we've invited Jessica. Um, to participate in a para and she's agreed and they will be running the 800 meters along with all of our elite athletes that are overseas Tyrone Trey we've got our university athletes that will be home and of course they will be competing against some of the best in the world so we are excited looking forward to July the 1st yeah I cannot wait and one of my friends Elena DuPont who races for Canada will be coming down to join me um, I'm also looking for another athlete to come down as well so hopefully there'll be three of us um, I don't think Elena's too thrilled about the 800 but <laughs> it's okay um, I thought that it would be cool to show some drafting as well as some sprint work no yeah I think they were definitely surprised because we were originally talking about just doing a 100 or 200 and then after some thought that I had I thought it would be really cool to show some drafting so I was like let's bump it up to an eight. (laughs) Well it's very interesting Earl Um, we have had I've had streams and streams of mail coming in over the last week of some very very top class athletes who want to come to Bermuda for the permit meet. Um, Several reasons as you stated it's very very close to the world championships. Another reason it's going to be wonderful weather in Bermuda in July. Um, So I think that is is starting to get everyone's interest and because now we have a circuit in the Caribbean um, you know they just had the Grenada meet they have the meet in Cayman they had the the world relays in Bahamas they've got a meet in Jamaica so a lot of athletes are now looking at the circuit that we have versus traveling over to Europe so I think that's another reason we're getting so many athletes that are interested in coming to this meet so i mean i'm excited i woke up this morning with a with an email and it was a list of some top athletes and i was i was totally totally shocked when i read some of the names so i passed it on to me and devon and said okay we need to jump on top of this 
immediately and later on this afternoon I got another email so for the last two weeks I've been receiving email after email of athletes that want to come down to run in this meet so I think this is going to be bigger and better than it was last year um, Bermuda's going to be in for, for a treat also um, on top of having Jessica this year we're also going to have Lamont Marshall competing in the 3,000 meter steeplechase. Um, as you know, he's trying to qualify for the world championships um, this year. He ran very well at Penn Relays. So we want to give him an opportunity to also be seen in Bermuda running that steeplechase because we, that's another event that we have never seen or not seen at that level in Bermuda before. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's it's really important as well to bring awareness of parasport because I know that people see it on TV um, and see my races on the news and stuff like that, but it's totally different when you're sitting in the stands and you're actually watching a race happen. Totally different. So it would be pretty awesome to bring that to Bermuda. I'm going to enjoy it and just enjoy being home and, and uh, just competing with Elena here will just be incredible. Um, we're starting our racing season in two weeks, so I'll start getting my adrenaline pumping through that, and that'll definitely amp me up to come here to race. It'll be probably, uh, I think, my second to last race before I head to World Championships, so it'll be pretty exciting. We have, um, I was stating earlier, for most of the events, right now, we're oversubscribed. Um, so we've got to go through that list and start looking at, okay, look at some big names, also look at you know quality result we've also got to look at the cost because as you know some of these high quality athletes come with a price so <laughs> we might or we might not be able to afford them we'll see um so basically right now we just have a list so we haven't um confirmed anyone at the moment but i will say every single event right now is oversubscribed which for me is a fantastic thing because last year we were kind of scrambling at the last minute whereas this time we have more names than we than we need in every single event. Our athletes have their have their lanes. I mean, they're 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 in first, and then we you know we put everybody else around them. So we make sure that we are showcasing our own Bermuda talent first before we fill the other lanes. So the Trays, the Tyrones, the Shaquilles, the Dages, they're all in, and then we fill the lanes around them. And remember, in an 800, we can put up to 12 athletes if we want to in an 800 and just have them on the waterfall start um, but we're really just looking for eight um, per event at the most um, so we're like I said we're, we're excited and when I when I see the names that are coming up hopefully we're able to afford to bring them because I think it would be fantastic for Bermuda to see such talent here in Bermuda, you know, which is which is a step above the Carifta Games. We're talking about Olympians, World Champions, so that's going to be really fantastic. Oh, um, well, our two stars will be here. Um, Shaquille and Dej will definitely be here, and one of the athletes that I received an email from this morning is a top 800 meter runner as well. So just as last year, I think the 800 is going to be, you know, one of our highlight events as as per normal. Now, Jay, also on Saturday, the Bermuda Pacers Track Club. Uh, hosted their first seven inductees to their Hall of Fame. Uh, some names, household names throughout the years of sport, um, honored uh, for their contribution and starting at the Bermuda Pacers Track Club. We got a chance to speak to three of them at the Hamilton Amateur Dinghy Club. Proud. Um, this is actually the first award I've really received in Bermuda considering all these sports I've done, so it's an honor, and I give great honor to the Pacers and the committee for actually selecting me. Starting out your career at a young age, obviously you had a target in mind because you had Sonia there, so you had Sonia as a, as a person that you was trying to meet those girls and surpass them. How did you feel going into your first Carifta? Um, does those feelings come back when you get this honor? Well, the first Carifta was definitely an experience. I actually had a breakdown at my first Carifta, but thanks to Coach Jerry Swan, he pulled me through it, and the fact that it rained in the middle of the competition, so we actually had to stop. He pulled me through it, and I managed to win the gold medal, and actually, I think I PB'd on that day, so it was, it was a good experience after the fact. Initially, it was, it was shock-taking. Well, you obviously had a chance to uh, mentor some of the kids that went on the first time this year. So did you see what you saw in yourself in some of those kids going there, the fear or just being around so many people? 
Definitely. Um, I think for our kids, it was definitely the first time that they'd actually been in a full stadium. So it was shocking to them and you could actually see they were like overwhelmed. And I think that affected one or two performances, but overall they done really well and they coped excellently. During your presentation today, what were some of the things you were letting the people know and the kids know what to expect or what you went through throughout your track career? Well, I kept it kind of short because the guys that went before me basically said everything. So it was, in my career, it was a, I was a bit under, I was, it was a bit of a struggle for me because I was at a different place and I was involved in so many sports and making choices. You know, hindsight being 2020, I think had I decided just to do track, I could have definitely qualified for the Olympics. But it didn't go that way. But I don't. It definitely formed the base for me in my life in general. So it was a good thing. All right. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Brian, one of the first inducted into the Pacers Hall of Fame. Proud moment for you? Yeah. I mean, great, great group. And um, you know, I, I think I look at Hall of Fames now as as um, I think basic history you're trying to you know create the history of, of of a sport and then obviously in this case a track club which is in my opinion the greatest track club we've had in the history of this country simply due to the fact that everybody that i know of started at the paces and so it's a great great track club and it's a great idea to so that the kids coming along know the kid people who went before them and things the people before them achieved and give them something to strive for and realize like, hey man, wow, you know, some of the best athletes Bermuda ever had started here. Yeah. And man, it's, I could do that too. So yeah, it's, it's a great, great honor. When you're standing in front of these people talking about yourself, do you visualize yourself back in the days wearing the Pacers colors? Um, in this situation, no, I mean, I just, you know, I didn't have anything prepared. It's just everybody who went before me, I happened to be last, they were alphabetical. Um, you know, and Jay being the stand-up comment, you know, Jay killed a room, so, you know, where do you go from there? And then, um, though, but for me, I kind of had a thought where I might go in terms of speech-wise, but it was just simply to not necessarily make it all about what I've achieved or what I did. You know, you could read about that and look at that, some of it, you know, a little video around, but, um, to inspire the next generation to achieve, to, to realize that, you know, you had people from... Bermuda, Sam, Little Rock, become world champions, and travel all the world, compete at the highest level, do well at the highest level, to realize that you know you can do that. That's a possibility. So for me, it's like I said, I, it's a something I made a promise to myself a long time ago. I try to tell most of my athletes that I coach or people I coach I, I deal with is, you know, when you get to induct the Hall of Fame age, you don't want to look back saying, man, you know, well, shoot, you won't get there if you didn't put the work in at the beginning. So it's to get my age, you don't want to look back in your athletic career and say, man, I wish I had to train hard. I wish I had, you know. And that's something you can control every day. When you show up, get what you got. Get 100%. Leave it all out there. Because then you find out how good you can be or not be. I think that's another thing I found. A lot of people are afraid to put, push all the eggs, all the chips to the middle of the table because then they don't think, man, you know, what if I train as hard as I could be, dedicated as hard as I could do, everything I can do, and I don't achieve what I think I'm going to achieve. So that's the scary part about it, you know. Sometimes you might do everything you think you're possible, capable of doing, and maybe not perform to the level you think you should get to. So, but that's, that's the, that's life though, isn't it? Well, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. All right, Jay, um, Hall of Fame, Bermuda Pacers, how does that sound for you? Um, it hasn't sunk in quite yet, but um, it's truly an honor. I'm humbled um, to stand here before you and to stand before this, um, the, my colleagues who, who have also been inducted into the Hall of Fame. So, um, yeah, it's, I'm excited. I'm really excited, yeah. What are some of your fondest memories of, of growing up in the Pacers track club? Um, well, the first year I went, it was, um, <clears throat> I remember we, we wore red and white. And we were the Bermuda Striders, and then at some point we, I think the following year we switched to the green and yellow, um, which was something I didn't. It took me a while to get used to because red is my favorite color. I'm from Somerset. Um, I'm a red and blue guy, so you know to switch to green and um, the green and yellow was. It took me some time to get used to, but um, yeah, I mean I have a lot of memories. Um, forced a lot of friendships uh, along the way. 
um, with um, like Terrence Armstrong and um, and Jerome Richards, you know, we we become almost best of friends um, as a result of our years in the Pacers. So a um, lot a lot of good times, a lot of good times at the Pacers with the Pacers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, congratulations. Uh, thank you very much. Bermuda, listen up. D Music is here exclusively for Digicel customers. Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free. With D Music, you can easily search for your favorite artists and create playlists to fit your lifestyle. Plus, you have the option to download music to your device so you can find a song for any moment, even when offline. D Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in store or online to see how you can get D Music today. Your thoughts on Bermuda Pacers Hall of Famers. And I know you personally know quite a few of these guys uh, and would have some stories about some of the things that you know about them personally. Well, something we just can't see on TV. Yeah. <laughs> No, uh, it, it, it's it's. We've been talking about the last couple of weeks, and and this weekend, especially this weekend, was a weekend of being honored. And sometimes, as a community, we take too long when we wait to somebody's past to actually appreciate and show them our appreciation for their accomplishments in the sport. Um, the Bermuda Pacers done a great job of these nominees. All of them, obviously, obviously well deserved. All of them well deserved. Um, my question, because you know, after reading some of the bias, we, but we lived it. Mm. So even from Terrence Armstrong to 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 Jay Donawa, to um, Leslie Rooks, to Terry Lynn, to all the all seven of them, my question would be, um, Clive Long. What was the inspiration from Clive Long? Because a lot of those years, Clive Long was here, and Jay and Terrence probably got the last little bit of Clive Long. Um, but um, just Clive Long. I mean, the Pacers of the Pacers have been there, but Clive Long really started a crop of athletes that done very well. Uh, and to hear these lots of accomplishments, when you see the athletes now, it's like and, and and that's I'm thinking that's one of the reasons why we need to have these Hall of Fames and have these because now we could tell the runners of today, this is what your coach did. <laughs> He's not, you know, he did this. He he has been down the same, you know, route that you're going through, you know. And, and it was so amazing because about speaking with Kyle Lightborn, just on a different on a different note, speaking with Kyle Lightborn probably about three months ago, just in a general conversation, and he was coaching so um, do you know there's a generation now that don't know that Kyle played football? Mm -hmm. Professional football. Professional right? professional football. Mm -hmm. Let alone that he played cricket mm -hmm. <laughs> and cut measure or not, but just professional football, you know. So we have to, we have to, you know, we can't wait for somebody else to come here and grab these stories and then tell us back the stories that we already know. Mm -hmm. So the stories that you hear from these trips, or you've been on a lot of these trips. I ain't saying nothing. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but no, and, and it's great, like I said, for them to be honored and, and appreciated. Well, I'm glad you mentioned football because the Bermuda Referees Association hosted a FIFA course for some 30-odd referees. Let's get a message from Talisha Anton, one of the FIFA instructors, that concluded on Saturday. Talisha, you spent a week in Bermuda, uh, well, just under a week in Bermuda, uh, with, our, with our referees, and you're, you're more of the fitness instructor. What's some of the things you've seen um, that the, the referees would need to improve on uh, overall? Um, basically, you know, we went through both theory and practical sessions. So one of the things that they, we thought that, that was important to them is understanding training principle. Like in anything in life, their principles. The same thing with training, understanding how we should progress, uh, how we should be specific to what we're doing, to the demands of the game, etc. And also the training categories, understanding the components of fitness, the agility, the coordination, the speed, high intensity, the low intensity, you know, having that aerobic base before you can go on to do anything that is very strenuous for the body, etc. So we would have um, done some of those activities in, in, in practical and also through theory, which there is a better understanding now. Of course, in going on, there is a lot, a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of um, 
speed not generally an issue but the aerobic base that we spoke about earlier that's needed is very important and it's you can see based on the fitness test that was done that that's that's a huge part of training that we have to develop through all the referees and then just go step by step and having them progress in the way that we want them to be as elite referees being that you do this, well, we seem to get this once a year. Um, is that enough as far as helping to motivate, giving proper instructions throughout the course of a maybe over a, a six or seven month period? Um, is it enough? The thing is, FIFA has invested in local instructors as well. So the local instructors from all the countries in the world, as, as you would hear the technical instructor says, that what is being done here is done all over in the world. We would have met through a for two or three course in which these material now are passed on to the local instructors as well. So even though each country may get a referee assistant um, program, a rap course each year, the instructor would have had knowledge also as to prepare the training programs and to help them. So the issue really is how committed are the referees then? And even the instructors, the commitment, commitment of the instructors to get it done. So once a year shouldn't be bad, two times a year. If, if the association wants to get somebody in to get it done, that's cool. But the instructors themselves should play a major role in developing the referees as well because FIFA is also helping in their development. What got you started into the, the administration side of, of, of referee? Um, admin, I won't call it really administration, but um, I was a na former national goalkeeper. I uh, had hopes also of being a FIFA fitness, um, a FIFA referee. I went off to university, went back home, and then just jumped right into what I studied, physical education and sports, and even therapy with some clubs and fitness with some clubs, and then I just decided I continue with the referee. So through the same for two or three course, I was explaining to you about that the instructors have the opportunity to go. I was uh, afforded one, and from there I was... Um, greeted by an instructor who saw my ability and my strength and everything and he basically encouraged me to continue to pursue it so I continued training studying um, through the other courses and so on and that was 2013 and uh, two or three years ago I was given the opportunity to be a regional development fitness instructor just in charge of a few countries in the Caribbean and last year was really big for me because that's when CONCACAF really invited me to some tournaments and so on and I FIFA invited me to the Under-17 World Cup as well, as well last year, and then this is where now I'm in now as a, a fitness instructor. So, like anything in life, like what we've been explaining for the referees, even I myself had to go through the process of understanding. And for me, I had to do the training as well. I had to show my ability as well because there's no way I can come and say, okay, this is a running te technique, knees up, um, leg extended, and I can't do it. I should be able to demonstrate it well as well. So I had to go through the entire process as well that I'm trying to put the referees through. So I'm letting them understand, even here or anywhere else I go in the Caribbean, that, listen, even me as an instructor, I had dreams to be a FIFA instructor, I had dreams to be a FIFA referee, but I had to put in the work. And you as a referee must put in the work to get to the FIFA list as well. Well, it was nice meeting you. Same here and uh, all the best. I know the referees will, will, will show what they have learned. They have already committed themselves and I must congratulate them because they, even though they may say, oh, we didn't know this and they, they were open to everything and it was fun and they were willing to learn and that was the best thing about it. Jay, it was only a few weeks ago that Erica Hawley stunned the U.S. collegiate triathlon uh, world uh, by winning her first collegiate um, triathlon. It was a draft legal one, but I got a chance to speak with her. Um, she's been doing exams and so forth, so I didn't really want to bother her. Um, she was fighting a cool, but uh, said, you know what, I'm going to tough through this one and, and, and get this interview over and done with. So I was able to talk to her about her performance, about what her plans are for the very near future. Very interesting young lady. Uh, let's hear from Erica Hawley. Eric, okay. uh, you left Bermuda on a high after the uh, ITU um, triathlon. To go into the U.S. collegiate um, draft legal race, um, were you expecting th your day to end the way it, the way it did? Um, no, I mean, I uh, I entered the race uh, not knowing anyone who I was racing against, completely blind. Um, so I was just kind of going in and hoping for a good race um and yeah it's just 
uh, ended up being probably one of my best races to date. I mean, uh, I I had a terrible run, and it was still the fastest run of the day, so that makes me feel good. Um, <laughs> and the uh, the bike was something that was um, that I obviously needed to work on following the Bermuda race, and um, being out in the front and having no one catch me that was kind of nice so it kind of proved that um my fitness isn't completely uh terrible <laughs> on the bike uh and then yeah the swim was good as well so yeah i'm really happy coming out of the water you must have felt good about yourself because you were in the mix right from the start um when did you realize that today was going to be my day because obviously you said you, you were you were a bit fearful of of your run um yeah so I came out of the water with a couple girls and, and then I had a really good transition um and then I was maybe five or ten seconds coming out of transition ahead of them and like beforehand with my coach I had not talked about this I had talked about like being in a pack and you know like tactical like what I would do um so when I was at my friend I kind of took the first like half a lap pretty easy on the bike um so I, I was like, I might as well um, go for it because I don't want to wait around for anyone. And uh, I guess on the day that worked. <laughs> changing, changing gears, changing the game plan. How much of that goes through your mind, and you want to make sure that you have enough left in the tank for when you finish that ride to get on that run? Yeah, I literally when I was thinking when I was on the bike, I was just thinking like, don't mess anything up, like don't do something stupid, and like take a corner too hot, and like crash or something i actually ended up dropping my water bottle on the the like halfway through the bike um which is just stupid and then like that did not set me up well for the run but uh i i was lucky that i didn't that i had enough time and that i didn't like cramp or anything but yeah it was all just kind of like experimenting because i'd never been in that position before <laughs> Take us through that moment as you were approaching the, the finish line because you had the biggest smile I've ever seen on your face. <laughs> yeah, it was insane. Um, like, I could, like, it was, the crowds there were insane. And, like, my team was there. I had maybe 30 of my, like, really good friends um, on the tri team, and all of my, like, best friends were there. And then that was my mom, obviously, and my nana. Um, and it was just, like, amazing. We had our, on the finish shoot, we had, like, our ten and like all of my friends were like scattered around the course everywhere I went there was like encouragement but yeah coming into the to the final like um shoot having like no one like close to me I could really just like, take it slow and absorb it and just like like enjoy it all you know <laughs> But then a quick transition because the next day you were obligated to do the Olympic distance. Now, how much of a worry was that for you as far as fitness and recovery? Yeah, um, that was that was really tough. Um, switching around the next day, I mean, my body was pretty sore after um, the race, even though um, I took the run pretty steady. Um, the bike obviously took it out of me, and I am. Um, it, it was never really my focus, so I mean, I was always there for the Doc Legal event, so I I knew this was going to be fun, but I knew that I was also a score for my team, so like, I had to put a good performance in. Um, my swim, well, like, I didn't expect it to hurt as much <laughs> as it did <laughs> on the swim, and then my bike was pretty awful. I mean, I, I got passed by a lot of people, but then my run ended up being like pretty much the same pace as um the draft legal and i had like passed like 20 people so that was, that was really nice after they'd passed me on the bike to come back and then pass them again so um and i ended up with a sprint finish from about 200 meters back i just there's two other girls with me um and one was on the um the navy uh team and i mean between us the points were really close and i just knew i had to like get her for my team and i think just the adrenaline and like competing for the team just pushed me through and um, made it more enjoyable. What has been life like around the campus since then? <laughs> um, I mean, within our community, it's it's been like, yeah, we're national champions. I mean, not, it depends on like, the, it's such a big campus, so only a few, a select few know that we're the, um, the winners, but it's been pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, I know that 
people uh, sounds ridiculous, but they like within our team they like think the think of you praise you like especially me um nick and dan because we we all got um a national title and and like it's i feel like people are looking up to us and um i feel pretty like (laughs) on my high horse but i know i need to like step down sometimes Open up a world of music at your fingertips and access millions of songs from free with D-Music, exclusively from Digicel. With D-Music, you can stream and download songs and create playlists of your favorite artists to fit your lifestyle. Whether you're working out at the gym, getting ready for a Friday night, or just chilling at home, D-Music comes with one gig of free data to stream and download songs without it impacting your data usage. That's 32 hours worth of music. Visit us in-store or online to see how you can get D-Music today. Well, Earl... When you hear her name now, you know what I'm thinking automatically. The next Flora Duffy. Sure. Flora's opening the door up. And I think Erica's gonna run through. Sure. That's that's and I'm pretty sure she's already thought about that too. <laughs> but the talent is there. The talent is there. And she's in a position now to take advantage of the coaching and the training, the facilities and the equipment and the technology that you'll need for that sport. And She's got the support from us, the people from Bermuda. So you know what? We wish her the best. Yeah. Well, what a way to end it. Erica Hawley, all the best. I'm Earl Baston. I'm Jacqueline Jay. Thanks for joining this edition of the Digital Sports Show right here on islandstats.com.